Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Welcome to live from Abuja, where the NESG will be holding their 22nd summit. And that is what we're focusing on at this time. And we're joined by uh, Shola David Boa, who is the Vice Chairman of the NESG. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you for inviting me. You know, when uh, thinking about this NESG coming up at this time, when the economy is in recession, one wonders, what was it thinking? Did the NESG ever think, well, this particular one is going to be maybe a little tough because of the circumstances that we're in and in terms of the kind of hard truths that have to be told at the summit. Yes, we believe that um, in choosing the theme made in Nigeria, um, the board of the NESG debated it extensively and we felt that this was the right time to re-emphasize the message of ensuring that as much as possible um, the productive capacity of the Nigerian economy has to be developed. Um, we believe that um, Nigeria's economic growth is going to be spurred by ensuring that we utilize Nigerian goods and services. But having said that, it does not mean that we are not part of a globalization effort. Because ultimately, it's about creating the right enabling environment so that Nigerians can um, make their goods and services for export. And also, um, companies abroad can come to Nigeria and use Nigerian labor, Nigerian resources to produce goods as well. So we believe that a focus on made in Nigeria will also help to drive export and lead to an export-led growth. But you know, we're focusing on this. There are so many factors uh, that will be considered when talking about made in Nigeria. But I know that the NESG will always be optimistic that some of these issues will be addressed. But what about the previous summits that have held, those areas that have not been ironed out? Are you in any way concerned that perhaps at the end of the day, this may also suffer the same fate? So this is the 22nd summit of the NESG and the NESG continues to be the foremost platform for public sector and private sector dialogue. We believe our role is to encourage open debate that will enable our economy to grow, that will lead to private sector led growth and responsible private sector investment. Now, policies that we have discussed, promoted, um, encouraged over the past 22 years um, include things like privatization, you know, uh, opening up of the economy, freeing the foreign exchange market. We made these points during military regimes, you know, and some of the things that today seem very obvious and accepted wisdom 20 years ago was not. So the point I'm making is that you have to continue to repeat and say the right thing, that the markets are the way forward and that um, ensuring that our markets are liquid, open, transparent, that there is good governance and that the government um, put in place the infrastructure um, to create the enabling environment is what is ultimately going to drive growth and we're going to continue to say that. So we believe that um, this summit focusing on made in Nigeria goods is just another opportunity to ensure that we reiterate that same message that we have been making over the past 22 mm. years. The 22nd summit, I mean, definitely means that if, if we were to go at the rate of one per year, it means this has been on for at least 22 years. And I recall the last year's summit, uh, we talked about tough choices. Sure. At that time, one of the comments, and I think one of the things that pervaded the summit was the fact that there were no ministers appointed as of that time. And people were saying, are you sure this was the right time to have organized this, considering the impact and the import of what has been said here, uh, and how it should ultimately affect the economy and this is one year you know down the line and we're in a recession is the NESG going to say I told you so no we are not here to um, make accusations mm -hmm. or to apportion blame we see ourselves as partners mm -hmm. with the public sector 
to ensure that um, our economy achieves its full potential. Now, the tough choices that we spoke about last year was the fact that if our exchange rate continued to be um, sort of maintained at the same level, okay, it was going to create the kind of problems that we see now. You know, and the most important thing is that um, we see the central bank responding to that. So um, they have started removing some of the restrictions, you know, which led to a recent adjustment. So ours is constructive um, um, contributions and collaboration. This is not about blame. Every single Nigerian must step forward to see what they can do for their country. Mm. You know, in stepping forward, sorry, Mark, but let, let, you know, when you talk about uh, the need for us to keep talking about it, what uh, comes to mind is the theme of uh, what, uh, China's television on the October 1st uh, recursive, uh, which definitely we keep looking at all of the time, and by the time we keep talking about it all of the time, perhaps we'll get to where we're headed. Does it seem as if uh, anyone is helping matters? Because by now we sh should have been seeing a rise in uh, patronage of uh, local goods made by Nigerians. Don't forget this is also coming on the back of what we've seen one of the biggest entrepreneurs in the country saying that, look, I'm going to fold up, I'm going to close my shop because of some kind of, uh, uh, you know, on the current habits uh, from agencies of government. Now, I'm, I'm talking about uh, a risk of foods. Uh, it made headlines when they did say they were closing shop. Have we been able to harness some of the potentials of these people uh, who are into uh, Nigerian goods and products? Yes. I believe that there has been some progress I mean, in the Nigerian economy. If you look you know, over the past 20 years for sure. And you know, the recent rebasing, or the rebasing that took place uh, a couple of years ago of the Nigerian economy showed how much the economy had expanded and also the fact that it is a diversified economy. Our GDP is well diversified. You know, oil and gas is, is under 10%. And therefore, Nigerian goods and services are being consumed. We're talking about um, increasing the added value, you know. We're talking about the fact that our ability to do so um, can be much greater, which will then help to grow our economy faster. And um, it's not only manufacturing, because people tend to sort of talk only about manufacturing. So manufacturing is important, you know, and especially in the agricultural sector, where you're talking about agro allied and, you know, the entire agricultural value chain, where you see an agriculture grow by 4.5%, by 4 you know, in the last quarter. But even services sector, the creative arts, ICT, you find that the younger people, you know, are more engaged in these areas. They all contribute to economic growth. So we're talking about getting all cylinders firing in our economy. You know, if we can get that, you know, the Nigerian economy should be growing in double digits. What we have... Double digits? Yes. There's absolutely no reason why. What we have is a, is a, is a terms of trade um, challenge arising from foreign exchange. Okay. Now, part of the challenge with foreign exchange is that um, being part of a global economy, um, you depend on inflows coming in and outflows coming in. When we had high oil prices, um, that kind of masked um, um, the problem a bit. But the reality is with the collapse of oil price and a loss of business confidence okay, in the economy, the flows into the economy have reduced significantly. So it's almost like a double whammy. Your oil revenues have come down. The flows that were normally coming in have also crashed. You know, so there's a severe shortage of foreign exchange coming in, you know, compared to the demand. So it's a foreign exchange problem, you know, which there are various ways to handle that, but ultimately it has to lead to um, confidence in the Nigerian economy um, being, being restored. In all of this, are you also looking at the complaints uh, uh, concerning ease of doing business in Nigeria? Uh, Startups uh, in other parts of the world are uh, really, really encouraged uh, by the government. Sometimes you have a tax holiday, you're told this X amount of years, nothing of such will happen, then they come back, do an inventory of what uh, uh, form of progress you've had before they say, okay, come on the tax uh, uh, scheme. 
are we doing that for these startups and people making incursion into uh, Nigerian e economy? Yeah. So most SMEs, startups, you know, the top two complaints is finance and the cost of power, you know, energy to run their business. Um, it's just very, very expensive, which is why you're seeing more and more young people getting involved in things that don't require um, and that much, so the creative arts, service, etc. You know, but you know, if you gave, if if Nigerians had sufficient power, you know, and didn't have to make their own private arrangements. Um, to, to provide power, you'd find that the um, survival rate of a significant amount of SMEs will increase. You know, finance is a challenge because of the high interest rate structure. You know, um, but you know, until we can bring down inflation, you know, it's going to be a challenge to um, to bring down interest rates. So there's, we've got to manage that process. But. Um, it's a number of things, and um, I think the most important thing, and what Nigerians want the most, is an opportunity to be able to express themselves, an opportunity to be able to do business and add some value to the economy. Is that one of the areas that the summit is going to be addressed in? That uh, debate between fiscal and monetary policies, is that something that are going to be considering that it's dominated the new space quite a bit in recent times? Absolutely. Today, for instance, we are starting with uh, a macroeconomic um, policy discussion and you know when you talk about the macroeconomy it involves both fiscal policy and monetary policy and an alignment of both fiscal and monetary policy is absolutely um, crucial you know to drive economic growth